Hey, what's up? Welcome back to CSS3 in 30 days. This is day seven. We're gonna be doing some image manipulation purely with CSS. Over here in my browser, check it out right here, day seven image manipulation. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. So basically, we're gonna use uh, these nice, beautiful images uh, that I'm pulling from Unsplash. And I'll show you there in the markup in a moment how that, uh, how that happens. But what I'm doing is I'm using some CSS3 filters to manipulate the images. So here are the original images right here. And you can see they're just normal images. But then down here, they have different styles. You can see this first one is black and white. And when I hover, it, can ch it changes back to its original color. And the second one is blurred. And when I hover, it goes uh, back to its original focus. So it looks like it has this kind of cool focus effect. And this one is inverted. If I hover, it goes back to the original image. This one is sepia tone. And then when I hover, it goes back to the original image. So it's pretty cool. You could do some basic photo editing and manipulation in CSS without having to go into Photoshop. So if you wanna make an image black and white or sepia toned, or you wanna blur it a little bit, or you wanna play around with it like that, you can just use CSS3. So head over to the code editor here and make sure you download the course files for this lesson. It is seven uh, image manipulation. As always, there's an index, a final, and a sandbox file. Uh, and the index here I'm gonna show you, I'm just pulling some images from Unsplash. So basically this is like a placeholder image. You can pull them in like so. So unsplash.it, 500 by 300 is the dimensions. Query string image equals one, uh, 1074, which is the, the ID of the image. You, if you change that, it'll pull up a different image. So it's kind of a cool way of showing images uh, on your websites for placeholders or for images because Unsplash is a free stock photography site. Okay, so you can see here on each of the images, I have classes. So I have the image, the first one is grayscale, the second one is blur, invert, and sepia. And in the final CSS, you can see all this, the styles here, which we're gonna be coding up. It's pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and open our sandbox.css. And let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is select all of the images within the uh, sandbox. So sandbox image, and we're gonna say uh, WebKit transition all 0 0.3 seconds into ease. Copy that and just uh, have a fallback for transition here. Beauty, just like that. And what we're gonna do is we're also gonna say sandbox image on hover, and we're just gonna say cursor crosshair, just uh, for something different. When you hover over the image, I want the cursor to change to a crosshair. Purely for user experience, nothing else. Okay, and now let's get right to it. We're gonna say grayscale is the first set of, the first image, and we're going to do WebKit filter. This is the CSS uh, that we're gonna be doing. Uh, you're gonna be using, it's a CSS style called filter, but WebKit filter is the, uh, the browser prefix for WebKit. And we're gonna say grayscale. And then in parentheses, you put the amount you want it to be grayscale. So I'm just gonna say one for 100%, because you could do a, a sliding scale. And let's copy this, paste it out, and just do filter. Whoa, that was interesting. There we go, save that, and let's go check it out. So here we go, we've got the grayscale image here, uh, just like that. So that one, we've changed it to grayscale. So now if I go back to the code editor and maybe I change this to like 0 0.5 and see what that looks like, you can see over here it actually is 50% grayscale. So it's kind of a cool um, effect. You can actually have it be varying degrees. It doesn't have to be hard black and white. You know, it could be any uh, percentage in between, which is really cool. I'm gonna go back and change it to one. And now what I wanna do is on hover, I want it to go back to its original uh, style, the original image. So I'm gonna paste the same rule here and I'm just gonna change this to grayscale zero and grayscale zero on hover. So now if I save that, go back to the browser, when I hover, it's going to have that effect. And I can see when I'm hovering here, it's just turning it on and off. It's not doing the transition that we set up. So if I go back to my brow uh, code editor here, I can actually see that I've made a typo in line seven sandbox. It needs to be sandbox with the D not sandbox. So now if I save that and check it out, it should have that effect. Beautiful, nice and subtle, just like that. 
All right, so now let's move on to the next uh, image. That's going to be the blur image. So it's just the class of blur. We have WebKit filter. Again, we're just using filters. It's pretty simple. And we're using blur. And we're going to say three pixel blur. You can, again, you can change that to different values. And I'm going to just have the fallback here, just like so. And let's go ahead and copy that, paste it. And what we're going to do here is change the blur back to zero on hover. So we'll just do that right out the gate. Save that, check it out over here in the browser. And now if I scroll down to image two, it's blurred. Awesome. Hover, going back to normal. It's fading in and out. Looks really nice. Now what if we made it like, I don't know, what's a one pixel blur look like? Let's check it out in the browser again. More subtle. It's just kind of slightly blurred. And if we did something wild, like 10 pixels, uh, that image is going to be super blurry. You can hardly even notice it. So that's kind of a cool little effect. You know, maybe that's coming, you're getting some ideas thinking about what you could do with that. Um, you know, if you wanted to reveal something, if you have a portfolio website and you want to reveal, you know, you, this is your background and you have text overlaid. And then when you hover it, the, the image kind of fades in or whatever you want to do. There's certain things that you could do just in CSS, just to give a nice user experience using the WebKit filters. Uh, okay, so save that. I'm just going to make it three pixels again. Now the next one, we're going to change uh, it to an inversion of the color. So all we're going to do here is do the class of invert. And we're going to do the WebKit filter again. And you guessed it, invert parentheses. This is going to be one or zero. Um, I believe we could do a sliding scale again. We'll try it again in a moment. And I'm going to change this to filter invert one. And let's copy that, do a hovered version of that. And again, you guessed it, you're probably ahead of me now. Invert zero, we're gonna switch it back to normal on hover. Save it, go to your browser, check it out. It's fully inverted. The colors are when you hover, it goes back to normal. Now what if we changed it to a different value like 0 0.5, again, just half. Does that actually work? If you go over to the browser, uh, it doesn't quite look like it does. What if I, I don't know, maybe I'll try a different value. Okay, yeah, it kind of does something there. It looks like it's almost like an opacity. If I save that to 0 0.09. So yeah, it kind of does the trick there. I wonder if two does anything. No, two doesn't do anything. So it's just kind of one. And it looks like you can do less. So it almost looks like it's like an opacity, uh, how much of it you can see. It's not actually inverting the color so much as it's just making it gray. And so it's kind of like, it's not even opacity. It's just like you can't quite see the full inversion. So uh, if you want to stick to the inversion, I don't really know when you'd use this anyway. Uh, one and zero, stick to a binary numbers here. There it is. Okay, now the next one, let's move on to something else. Let's do sepia. This is one that I could see you using. Sepia. We're going to do WebKit filter again. And we're going to do sepia. And uh, one. And we're going to do filter here. And we're going to copy that out. And we're going to paste that. We're going to make it a hover. And we're going to change that back to zero. Save that and let's check it out in the browser. There is our sepia tone right there. And you hover, it toggles it in and out. And so there you have it. There are some examples of, of the CSS filters. Now, if you want to play around with them a little bit more, you can actually check out the CSS3 filter property uh, online. Google it, w3schools.com is a great resource. And you can see all the different versions and how to play around with them. So here, for example, there are, these are the different filters. So there's blur, which uses a pixel uh, measurement brightness, contrast, uh, drop shadows, grayscale, hue rotate, invert, which is actually percentage. So we were actually using uh, just zeros and ones. If we wanted to use a percentage here, that might've been a better choice. Let's do 50% and 50%. Save that, go to invert. And again, the 50% was kind of like the 0.5. So maybe, I don't really know what goes on there, but if I do 70%, you can see it partially. So yeah, I'm going to stick to one for now. Unusual. Let's go back to the browser here so you can see there's opacity, saturate if you want to saturate the image a little bit more. 
uh, sepia URL. That's if you want to use XML files that has SVG filters and then just initial and inherit. So those are the different CSS3 filter functions that you can use. Uh, feel free to read up on it if you want or play around with it and experiment. And that is it for day seven. Hang tight. We have some more fun stuff. In fact, we have a really cool uh, project that we're going to build tomorrow. See you then.